All right. All right. First Samuel 18. Boy, I'm glad Brother Walters preached that message a minute ago. Rattled our cage. Got mean a little bit. Don't y'all like mean preaching every now and then? Amen. Every now and then. I, I, every now and then I need some preacher rear back and bust me right in my mouth. Amen. And I appreciate, uh, appreciate him. That'll make my job a little bit easier this morning. I ain't going to be mean. I've got a message I want to try to give to you for the Lord to help us. And uh, I, I don't mean to be whatever. If you sound guys give me just a little more here, I'm battling with some inner ear thing. And if I don't think I can hear me, I don't think you can hear me either. So I trust they'll maybe help us out. First Samuel chapter 18, verse number 1. The Bible said, And it came to pass, when he had made an end of speaking unto Saul, that the soul of Jonathan was knit with the soul of David. And Jonathan loved him as his own soul. And Saul took him that day, and he would let him go no more home to his father. Then Jonathan and David made a covenant because he loved him as his own soul. Jonathan stripped himself of the robe that was upon him and gave it to David, and his garments, even to his sword and to his bow and to his girdle. I want to reference several other portions of Scripture, and you'll see a theme, I think, connecting these together. Look over in another chapter there, chapter 19, verse 1, And Saul spake Jonathan his son and all his servants that they should kill David. But Jonathan, Saul's son, delighted much in David. Notice with me, if you will, in chapter number 20. In chapter number 20, notice with me verse number 16. So Jonathan made a covenant with the house of David, saying, Let the Lord even require it at the hand of David's enemies. And Jonathan calls David to swear again because he loved him. For he loved him as his own soul. If you look over just a few more chapters in chapter number 23, I'll reference this passage here in just a moment. Understanding before I read it, this is the last time Jonathan and David will ever lay eyes on each other. It's the last time they'll be in the presence of one another. It's the last opportunity they have uh, to enjoy fellowship with one another. The Bible said in verse 16, And Jonathan, Saul's son, arose and went to David into the wood and strengthened his hand in God. He said unto him, Fear not, for the hand of Saul, my father, shall not find thee. And thou shalt be king over Israel, and I shall be next unto thee, and that also my father Saul knoweth. They too made a covenant before the Lord, and... David abode in the wood, and Jonathan went to his house. In the last chapter of 1 Samuel, we read of the, of the tragedy that took place. In chapter number 31, verse 1, Now the Philistines fought against Israel, and the men of Israel fled from before the Philistines and fell down slain in Mount Gilboa. And the Philistines followed hard upon Saul and upon his sons. And the Philistines slew Jonathan and Abinadab and Malchishua, Saul's son. We'll leave off that reading there. You can be seated this morning. Heavenly Father, thank you, Lord, for the meeting. Lord, every message has stirred our heart in some way, challenges. And, Lord, we feel like here in just a little while we'll leave having been in the presence of the Lord in this meeting. Thank you for bringing us this way. Thank you for Brother Doug and his wife and his family. Thank you for their church. And Lord, what this place, Lord, has meant to us these days. And Lord, I pray now for just a moment, you'd help us, Lord, communicate the burden of our heart. May the challenge again be laid upon us. And we'll thank you, Lord, for what you do. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. I want to consider this morning in the time we've been given the life of Jonathan today. And when we think about this Old Testament character, when we're introduced to him in the Word of God, we believe he to be a young man, and, and the life and the things that were communicated about Jonathan span really nearly the entirety of the book of 1 Samuel. 
We don't know a whole lot about him. We're giving little glimpses into his life at different times, different things he accomplished. But what I'm interested in this morning in the life of Jonathan, there are two main characters that, uh, that Jonathan's life seems to be centered around as you study his life. Namely that, we understand that the obvious first character is that of Saul, his father. When you consider this relationship, I would remind you this morning that this is a relationship that has in it a natural connection. He was born into this family. This is his earthly father. This uh, is the one that has raised him, the one that has brought him in this life. Is uh, Our fathers maybe at times have told us when we was growing up, uh, I, I'm your daddy. I brought you in this world, and I can take you out of this world. He had a connection, a natural connection with uh, Saul. And when we consider Saul and all that Saul was, a man that uh, had been appointed even by the Lord in his early days to be the king of the nation of Israel, and yet uh, we find in Saul a, a hideous picture, if you will, of that fleshly nature that dwells within each of us. Uh, Saul was a man of rebellion like our flesh is, a man of pride like our flesh is, a, a man of sin, a man of, uh, of uh, absolute disregard in his relationship with God, a man of cowardice, a man of defeat. Uh, a man that, that had been reduced to uh, uh, really a sad, sad picture of what God had uh, established him to be in the start. And I find in Saul that picture of our flesh, of my flesh. I uh, don't want to preach down to you this morning. We all find within ourselves there uh, is a natural connection we have to the fleshly endemic nature uh, that dwells in each of us. We received it by way of, uh, of our first birth. Uh, and it's there and it, it abides and it's got us in trouble that has got us in sin and has led us in rebellion that, uh, and has promoted pride even in our own life. Has shortcut us. I think about Jonathan and his relationship to Saul that, uh, that because of Saul's sin that Jonathan reaps some things because of that he would be cut out of the lineage of being the next king over the nation of Israel, that uh, he had lost the crown, he had lost the favor of God upon his life, and, and how that all that is represented in Saul had an effect in uh, the life of Jonathan. And, and so in Saul we see a natural connection. Uh, we see a picture of our own flesh. Uh, but consider with me the second character Character, I, I believe maybe stands on the right side of Jonathan and it is the man that we know so much of uh, that man by the name of David uh, David uh, if uh, Saul represents the flesh and I, I believe we could say this morning that David represents the Lord Jesus uh, when we th consider this relationship between uh, these two we uh, would say that the relationship between Jonathan and David. Uh, it is not a natural connection, but it is a spiritual connection. I, I say that because in verse number 1 of chapter number 18, the Bible said that uh, the soul of Jonathan was knit uh, to the soul of David. Uh, why the only one that can knit a soul is the, none other than the Lord. That uh, that takes a sovereign act that uh, is an act of the grace of God that uh, knits a soul to the soul of another. Uh, this is a spiritual connection. I, I think about Jonathan and, and about David and their relationship and, and uh, what it must have been like when they were introduced to one another. Uh, as best I can tell in lining the Scripture up, it, uh, it, it obviously to me seems to have taken place in the valley of Elah in chapter number 17. Uh, in that time, Saul, a representation of the flesh, 
uh, has reduced them to defeat and a spirit of cowardice as Saul and all the mighty men of Israel are hiding behind every bush and every rock. They are, are in fear the champion of the Philistines, that great enemy uh, and type of the devil, no doubt. Uh, but there was a young man that uh, had been sent from the father's house that uh, bore some provisions to go down and check on that uh, stayed and how the battle was fairy. Uh, we understand when he gets there he sees it uh, the men are in a mess it, and uh, there's nobody that is able that uh, much less willing to involve himself. I'm about to feel like preaching now. Uh, but when David gets there uh, uh, he sees them in an absolute mess it, uh, and David as a young man being sent from the Father, uh, uh, shortcutting the story this morning, we know that uh, he's the one that arose up without fear and a spirit of victory and said, Is there not a cause? and was willing to go down. Uh, and my friend put his own life on the line did, and to take on the great champion of the enemy. Yet, and uh, what a battle was won by David. I think of our darling Savior this morning, how uh, to 2,000 years ago, he was sent from the Father's house and uh, brought with him some provisions of grace and of mercy. And boy, we was in a mess, were we not? It, and sin had reduced us down to nothing. It, and uh, we was in defeat and we was going to die that way. Yet, and be in bondage to that of the enemy. Yet, I'm glad the Savior came with the call, said, and thank God went to Calvary yet and dealt with the great foe and enemy of man yet, and that was when Jonathan that's where Jonathan yet, uh, first met David yet, uh, I think when they when he found uh, David uh, when he was introduced to David they some things he found yet, I think we could say he found a deliverer that was able uh, he found a deliverer that was able uh, why Saul was not able was not willing yet uh, and, and in his own self knew he had lost the touch of God in his life uh, and was not an able deliverer yet. Uh, but when Jonathan met David yet, he found one that was able yet. he found one that wasn't afraid uh, he found one willing to put his life on the line I think when he found David and David found him yet, uh, that he found a friend that was faithful Faithful. Uh, my friend, the text said his soul was near to that uh, of the soul of David. And over and over, beginning in chapter number 18, the Bible said uh, that they too made a covenant one with another. Uh, that is, when he met David, uh, David said, I'll be your friend for life. Uh, amen. Ain't nothing going to come between you and me. As far as David was concerned, it. Uh, uh, David uh, revealed and covenanted and promised said, uh, that my friend, he would always be a faithful friend to Jonathan. I think about when I met the Lord, I found a, a deliverer that was able uh, and I found a friend uh, that was faithful. He's the one that promised and covenanted and I'll never leave thee uh, nor forsake thee. Yet yeah. He's the one that said, I'll be the same yesterday, today, and forever and thank God I found in the Lord what Jonathan found in David a friend that's sticking closer than any brother did. ain't you glad you know the Lord today yet ain't you glad for the day the Lord came into your life amen he brought deliverance and he brought his friendship he's able and he's faithful I think he found in David a king that was stable. As Saul, you talk about an unstable king. Yet he's up one day and enjoying life. Yet and the next day he's making weird commands to make hardship on everybody. Yet I'd like to kill Jonathan one day. Yet because of his instability and the evil spirits attached to his life. Yet and I'm talking about made it hard on Jonathan. Yet but when David 
David showed up, he showed up as a new anointed king. Yeah. Uh, he came as a king that uh, that had some stability about him and the way he's going to rule it, uh, and the way that he would deal with Jonathan. Uh, David was never up and down. David was just steadfast it, uh, and stable, a stable source in the life of Jonathan. I'm glad this morning that I have a stable king that uh, is over my life. I, I remember what it was to live lost and undone, it, uh, to be undone. Under the, under the authority of the old king and how hard that he used to make it and, and how weird and strange and, and brutal he was in my life but I'm glad I met the king one day the Lord Jesus and found in him a king that is stable amen and so Jonathan finds in David uh, some wonderful things in this relationship uh, that is going to be such a vital, vital part of his life. In fact, when Jonathan meets him and finds all this, here's what Jonathan does. He stripped himself of the robe that was upon it. And there ain't no funny business going on here. They some perverts that, uh, that uh, want to make this out to be something it's not. Uh, uh, David and uh, Jonathan, they weren't homosexuals and sodomites. That, uh, they weren't perverting. This is a spiritual transaction that is going on. Uh, this is Jonathan's way, Brother Jeffrey, of, of him telling David, I'm giving you my identity. I'm taking off my garments. My identity is going to be in you. I'm laying down all the weapons in my warfare. I'm not interested in fighting you. I'm not interested in going against you. I'm not interested in being your enemy. And what he is doing, he is making this covenant and he is vowing to David all of his allegiance. He is vowing to David, I understand who you are. I need you in my life. And he is in, in, in totality embracing this man David in his life. I see that as a wonderful picture. i got to hurry. I'm a bogging down. But in verse number 4, a wonderful picture of that, uh, of our uh, relationship with the Lord when we got saved. Is that not what we did? We lost our identity in Him. Hey, Amen. We was an enemy of the Lord, but we laid down our weapons. Hey, Amen. We gave, we laid our sword down at His feet. Hey, Amen. We entered into His battalion. Hey, Amen. Began to side with Him. Uh, ain't you glad you ain't had enmity with the Lord? Uh, hey man, I'm glad I'm on friendly terms. Uh, I'm glad I got an advocate. I'm glad I got one that's brought me in. Uh, and Jonathan, what a picture of salvation that is in Jonathan's life as he strips himself and lays all this at David's feet. And so he embraces him. What I want to point out said all that to say this I cut a lot of this out I'll give you my thought I'll sit down what I'm interested in this morning in this relationship when it ends in verse number 4 no doubt Jonathan is thrilled he has found a deliverer a friend and a king he's found one that he can side with and one he can trust he's found one that that uh, in fact the Bible says in the text on a couple of occasions it, and is reiterated throughout the passages that reference this relationship that, that Jonathan loved David. He loved him for everything he had done in Jonathan's life. He loved him for the deliverance that he brought. He, he loved him because, uh, uh, because of David. He wasn't going into Philistine bondage. He, uh, he loved him because of the friendship that he showed to him. He, and he loved him because uh, uh, he was just the king and who wouldn't love the anointed king? He, and the Bible emphasizes over and over and over that, uh, that Jonathan loved David. He, and Jonathan delighted in David. He, he loved this one that's in his life. 
And I imagine when verse number 4 concludes, had that been the, the end of the story, we would have said, you know what? Uh, what a relationship Jonathan and David had. A and no doubt he thought in that moment of time that, uh, that as he's brought into that relationship with David, uh, that it's going to be happily ever after, that uh, there's never going to be any struggles there. There's never going to be anything that, uh, that, that is going to make a hardship if I've got a king and a deliverer and a friend. Uh, but, but I want to remind you today uh, that when David was brought in the house of Saul on that day, and Jonathan now not only has a natural connection to Saul, his father, uh, he has his spiritual connection with David, his friend. Uh, but I'm interested in that, uh, that, uh, that it wasn't always going to be a smooth road. And you see this uh, man, Jonathan, the central figure uh, between the life of Saul and the life of David. Uh, we find that there would always be a battle going on between Saul and David. And guess who's in the middle of that? Jonathan is being pulled in both directions. There's something on the inside of him that says, I, I want to love David. I, I want to go with David. I, I want to acknowledge David. And, and yet there's another side over here in Saul and his daddy that, that seems to constantly be pulling on, on Jonathan where David is concerned. In fact, uh, it's not long into this relationship that, that Jonathan finds with David uh, that uh, David begins to get more attention than Saul. And when, uh, when David gets more attention than Saul, notice what the Bible said in verse number 9, and Saul eyed David from that day forward. Saul is not going to stand, Brother Rocky, uh, for David getting more attention than he gets. Uh, they've just come back saying Saul has slain his thousands and David is ten thousand set. And Saul begins to rise up in envy. In fact, if you look further into chapter number 18, verse 12, and Saul was afraid of David uh, because the Lord was with him and was departed from Saul. The Bible said in verse 20, and Saul saw and knew that the Lord was with David and that Michael, Saul's daughter, loved him. It looks like uh, everybody's loving on David and Saul is being cut out and Saul is being left behind and, and Saul is upset about this. Seth. And so what's he going to do? Look in verse number 29. And Saul was yet the more afraid of David and Saul became David's enemy continually. Now, I want to say this morning, I, I got to hurry. I'm running out of time. I'm about to where my thought is, and I'll, I'll just sit down. I'll give it to you. You can chew on it, and we'll let the Holy Ghost preach it to you. Just because you're saved and you know the Lord doesn't mean there's not another natural connection you still have. Here's what Jesus said to Nicodemus in John 3 and speaking to him about the necessity of the new birth that, that you must be born again. He said, he said, when I need you to understand, Nicodemus, that which is born of the flesh is flesh. That's all it'll ever be. There is no hope for your flesh. Flesh and blood are not going to inherit the kingdom of God. That, that when you got saved, listen, Brother Billy Mitchell used to say, uh, when it comes to our flesh, God gave up on it. Uh, uh, way back yonder in the Garden of Eden. Uh, uh, when He saved us, He didn't save our flesh. Uh, uh, we got in the family of God by a spiritual connection, born of the Holy Ghost. Uh, amen. And I'm glad to have been. Uh, uh, that flesh is still the flesh, eh? Uh, you can put a suit and a tie on it, wing tip shoes, eh? And throw a King James Bible up under its arm, eh? Uh, but the flesh can only be what the flesh is. That's why when you come to Romans 7, and I guess all this preacher's got to make the, uh, the addendum and the announcement, it takes us so long to preach because we've got to tell you what we're not preaching. We're not saying it's all right to sin. But the Apostle Paul said there's things that would or do not. 
There's things you would not better do. He said, I'll tell you what, I'm in a mess. I'm being pulled in two different directions. And Paul was able to confess what many of us have refused to confess and won't confess. He said, oh, wretched man that I am, who shall deliver me from the body of this death? He's talking about his flesh. He's talking about his flesh pulling on it. I thank God. He said, I thank God through Jesus Christ my Lord, which giveth me the victory. He's saying, I'm being pulled in both ways. Amen. I love the Lord. I love to do right. There's something in me that longs to please the Lord that and wants to avoid sin. That, and yet there's another sign that it seems like it's always trying to drag me back down. Now, I want to ask you for a moment to be honest. Because there's something the Lord showed me in the life of Jonathan that I can identify with. Does Jonathan love David? Your King James Bible says at least five times. Jonathan loved David. Jonathan loved David. Jonathan loved David. But here's my problem, brother, with Jonathan. It's the same problem I have with me. I say I love him. Sometimes I show him that I love him. But every time you see Jonathan saying he loves David, showing that he loves David, he turns right back around and runs straight back to Saul. I think I can put it this way, but Doug, and, and uh, my time's nearly up, so let me, give, let me give this to you. I think the problem is... He loves David. He's just too loyal to Saul. See, I believe if you're saved this morning, there's something on the inside of you that you love the Lord. And we love Him, John the Beloved said, because He first loved us. I believe if you're truly saved today, there's something. It may not be as big as it ought to be. It may not be as fervent as it ought to be. There's something on the inside. You love the Lord. You know where you ought to be. You know where you should be. You know where you could be. And you know God loves you and He loves you to Himself. And you know that He loves you enough to send His Son to die for you on an old rugged cross. And you know that He loves you and that there's just something, something spiritual spiritual on the inside that says I love the Lord man I would remind you that Jesus was questioned about what the greatest commandment was here's what he said he said the first and greatest commandment is this that thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart all thy mind and all thy soul we're supposed to love the Lord my wife, she didn't know what I was preaching this morning. She sent me a text early and, and she said, I want to share with you a verse that I read in my devotions this morning. She sent me Joshua 23, 11, where Joshua said, Take heed therefore unto yourselves that, that you love the Lord your God. And so if we're saved today, we love the Lord. We, uh, there's something in there that, uh, that, that when we hear Him sung about, hear Him preached about, that, uh, that we say, I love Him, I love Him, I love the Lord. This week we've been in these services. You know what I've said back there is they've Henson's in the waters and the choir and the young people last night blessed our heart in, in singing what they were doing. They're stirring that love that we have for the Savior. I want to say this morning, I, I'm not here to question whether or not you love Him. I understand we can take the Word of God and, and, and begin to run references that maybe would evaluate how much we love Him or how we should love Him. It, uh, that's not the point of the message this morning. It's just simply, uh, if you're saved, I know you love Him. If you're saved, you say that you love Him. You sing like you love Him. You, uh, you at times, you live like you love it. Uh, but if we're going to get anything, if this meeting's going to be of uh, of spiritual help to us down the road we're going to have to learn how to keep that relationship with Saul in check amen amen I got it looks like three two and a half minutes amen not three and a half what's this I'm going to give you a few things real quick about being in love with David but loyal to Saul 
chapter number 19, I, I don't have time to walk you all through it, but you know, I see the partnership Jonathan attempted. And in this chapter 18, he becomes, Saul becomes an enemy and is continually going to hide David and try, try to drive David away. And he begins to be successful throughout uh, these early days of David and Jonathan's relationship. Uh, so much so that in chapter 19, Saul comes to Jonathan and he says, he says to Jonathan, his son, and all his servants that they should kill David. And in other words, we can't let this young whippersnapper stay around here. Somebody better kill him. And Jonathan, Saul, son, delighted much in David. And so David's on the run. And Jonathan comes to David, and here's what he says. He said, now, you just hang back a little while and hide out a little while, and I'll go in there and I'll talk to my daddy, Saul, and I'll convince Saul that you ain't all that bad and you're not that big a threat and you ain't going to try. You ain't trying to take over anything. And, and let me speak good about you to Saul and then I'll bring you both under the same roof again when all this is said and done. Can I say that I see a lot of God's people trying uh, to bring the flesh and the spiritual realm under the same roof? Hey, uh, like you're going to cohabitate in both realms in the same time. And, and, and Jonathan did that. And Jonathan thought he had it something worked out. Uh, but the Bible said in verse number 8, And there was war again. And when war broke out, Saul rose up against David all over again. He's running through the house. He's throwing javelins. He's doing all he can uh, to stamp out David. Uh, and Jonathan made a mistake that so many of us do, trying to form a partnership with our flesh. The promise Jonathan assured in chapter number 20, uh, you'll find that, uh, that David is now on the run again. And you'll find that, that Jonathan comes to him that, and he, he, he realizes Saul is never going to be able to live with David under the same roof. Jonathan realizes that. And so the next step is, as he loves David, but he's law to Saul, here's what he promises. He said, David, I'm not going to fight against you. I'm not interested in killing you. I'm not interested in harming you. And, 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 so, uh, and so I understand we can't cohabitate with Saul. Uh, so David, you just you just know this. I'm going to go back home to Saul, but you and I, we're going to have a secret relationship. Buddy, I'm telling you, our churches are eat up with people, Brother Travis, that, that they're trying to have a secret relationship with Christ and maintain a relationship with Saul. No, it don't work because you see the pressure Jonathan apprehended in chapter number 20. You see, Saul hates David. He's angry with David, but the more that he finds uh, that Jonathan has anything to do with David, the more angry Saul gets at Jonathan. In fact, he's been angry with David. He's eyeing David. He's warring against David. Uh, the Bible said in chapter number 20, uh, chapter 20, verse 30, and Saul's anger was kindled against against Jonathan began to talk about his mama that's fighting terms Saul said your mama's a perverse woman he put so much pressure I gotta quit he put so much pressure on Jonathan in, the end, in, that, in that setting around the table the Bible said Jonathan went out and wept bitterly you're, listen, our flesh is so wicked and hateful. It don't hate Christ. It hates you for loving Christ. You think you're going to cohabitate with your flesh? You think you're going to, my friend, have a secret relationship with Christ and, and that the flesh will be all right with that? He ain't ever going to be all right with that. Uh, eventually, he's going to put so much pressure on you that it's going to bring heartache to your very life. Amen. Notice with me the parting Jonathan allowed. Amen. I ain't got time to preach all of it. I'm done. I'm going to give one more thought, but uh, please don't make me stop. Jonathan comes to David. 
You read in the end of chapter number 20. Hey, so much about this I'd love to give. I feel like this word, Lord, had me. The Bible said, Jonathan comes to David. He says, it ain't going to work. Here's what he says. He said, David, go in peace. Peace? There ain't going to be no peace, Jonathan. There ain't going to be any peace. Saul is going to hunt me down. Saul knows that you love me. Saul knows that you're loyal to him. He's going to keep putting the pressure on. At what do you mean? Go in peace. There ain't ever going to be peace between the flesh and the spirit. Here's what the Bible said. Here's what I'm interested in. The Bible said, and you'll have to look at it. Go down there. You'll find the verses. The Bible said, and David exceeded David exceeded I looked it up brother Rocky here's what that literally means it means David got down on his knees and was weeping saying Jonathan I know what sold. I know the pressure he's put on you. I know how tough he's making it on you. I, I know that you're in this struggle. You don't know what to do. And, and when it said that David exceeded, it literally made and through tears and a broken heart, David was begging Jonathan, come with me. Come with me. You know God's put His hand on my leg. You know that God has blessed this relationship. And He's begging Him. He's begging Him in that moment of time. Abandon so somebody said, well, that, that's just too tight of a relationship. It ain't no different than our flesh. Amen. If we're going to sell out and go all the way with God, amen, we're going to have to let, let our spiritual David exceed in our leg. And you're not here Him today. Come with with me. Come with me. Hey man, David couldn't promise where that's going to end up. He just said, come with me. I'm your deliverer. I'm your faithful friend. I'm the king that'll do you right. He was exceeding. He was begging Jonathan, come with me. Jonathan didn't. The Bible said, Brother Waters, he went back to his own house. He died in Gilboa the place of a heap of ruins. Only one other time when he lay eyes on David. you know what he said in that text? He said, I shall, we know you're going to be the king. Even my daddy knows you're going to be the king. Your flesh knows Jesus is the rightful king. Here's what, here's what Jonathan said. He said, I don't miss it now. King James, we believe every word's right the way it needs to be. Here's what he said, Brother Doug, chapter 23. He said, I shall be next unto thee. Not today. Not this service. Not this camp meeting. Sometime down the road. We'll take care of this thing and I'll be next unto you. And people put off what to tomorrow what they ought to do today to be in line with the Lord Jesus Christ. You, my friend, love Jesus and yet be loyal to Saul, your flesh. You can do that for a little while, but I promise you eventually it'll catch up with you. You'll fall in a Gilboa. There'll be a ruin take place in your life. If I had time to preach it, I'd tell you about how David raised the name of Jonathan back up in old Mephibosheth. Jonathan should have went with, with David that day when David begged him. He should have done in that moment of time what David, what he's told David he would do in time to come, but he didn't, and he ruined it all. David reached back, pulled a little boy, Jonathan's up by the name of Mephibosheth. You study it out later. I preach on Mephibosheth. All y'all preach on Mephibosheth. I never looked up his name, though, till the Lord showed me this. You know what his name means? Dispeller of shame. He took the shame of Jonathan away raised up the name of Jonathan again. You may, you may have had a fall. You may have had a fall. You may not, amen, you may have made some bad choices. You may not have been everything you should have been. I'm glad it does it. Listen, David made a covenant he intended to keep. Amen. Jonathan may not have kept his end of the bargain, but David kept his end of the bargain. 
Thank God. I want Listen, I want to love the Lord. That's the first and greatest commandment. But I want to be loyal to Him. Amen. If you enjoyed today's message, head on over to ibcforums.com and click on sermons. And don't forget to check out our other links in the notes section of today's broadcast. As always, thanks for listening.